Hi all. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the new topic in the privacy management system that is called as privacy by design. So privacy by design nowadays uh, it's a must required clause as per the GDPR and also as per the various privacy related framework. Privacy by design uh, what are the controls we need to implement uh, within the tools or softwares to protect the privacy data that would be covered in the privacy by design. So privacy by design uh, in this session today we are going to uh, learn the various concepts of the privacy by design. Apart from this we are also going to see uh, from policies to privacy enhancing technology that how we can implement privacy enhancing technology within the tools or softwares to protect the privacy data. Now before going ahead we need to understand what actually the privacy by design is. So privacy by design is a framework based upon the proactively embedding privacy into the design and the operation of IT systems, network infrastructure and the business practices. So in this privacy by design we need to have a proactive approach and by using this proactive approach we need to have a embedded pri privacy technology solution within the tools or software to protect the personal information of users. Protecting the privacy while meeting the regulatory requirements of the data protection around the world is becoming an increasingly challenging task. Taking a com comprehensive properly implemented risk-based approach where globally defined risks are anticipated and the countermeasures are built into the system and the operation. So the counter the risk which we have identified related to the privacy so we need to implement a solution or you can say countermeasure within the tools or the systems proactively and effectively to manage the privacy related risk. So this is called as a privacy by design. In this privacy by design there are seven fundamental principles are there. So we will see one by one what actually these fundamental principles are. The first fundamental principle is being proactive rather than being reactive. So we need to proactively anticipate, identify and the prevent the invasive events before they happen. This means taking action before the fact that we need to take action before the privacy related risk happen within the organization. So this is the first principle. Another principle is, the second principle is lead with privacy as the default setting that means privacy as default setting features needs to be provided in the IT system and, and the application to ensure personal data is automatically protected with no added actions required by any individual suppose if you are using any tools or software suppose you are using the um, facebook.com so in the facebook.com facebook should have implement various default features within their application to protect the privacy of the individual because you know the uh, Facebook is collecting or any multi any social media websites are collecting lots of personal information. So they need to build a default setting. So this is the another principle. The third principle is embedded privacy into design. Embedded privacy into design means privacy measures should not be add-ons. The privacy measures should not be add-ons. They should be fully integrated component in within the system. This should be a fully integrated component of the system that the those this privacy by design should not be act as a add-on feature. This is the third principle. Next the next and the fourth principle is retain fully functionality that means positive sum not zero sum what does this mean privacy by design employ a win-win approach to legislative system design goals 
that is both privacy and the security are important and no unnecessary trade trade off need to be made to achieve the both this would be a win win situation for both the data collect collection the organization which is collecting the data and also the data subject who is giving their personal information the most important control is the fifth principle which needs to be implemented that is called as the ensure end to end security what does this end to end security means the end to end security mean till it will start from the collection of the data it will start from the collection of the data and it will end on the disposal of the data when the moment you dispose the data so it will start from the data collection and ends with the data disposal in uh, in the the collection it will start from the collection and end will the disposal disposal of the data what you need to understand that means during this life cycle you need to prevent uh, you need to implement the security concepts within your tools softwares or your it systems to protect the personal information in this life cycle you are going to collect the data you are going to use the data you are going to uh, share the data or you are going to process the data you can say and the moment the data would be disposed the end to end life cycle should be Im should be controlled the next control the sixth one is related to maintain the visibility and the transparency that means during the period when you are having the personal information of a user you need to have a proper visibility of the data and the transparency of the data the next control and the last control or you can say the last principle is respect the user privacy keep it user centric what does it means that we we need to keep all the things as a user centric individual privacy interest must be supported by storing privacy defaults appropriate notice and user friendly option that means if you are collecting any data any personal information of a user you need to give a appropriate notice to the user and accordingly you need to fulfill their rights what are the user rights are there so these are the seven seven principles which needs to be implemented as a part of privacy by design this seven principle should be considered when organization is launching any new services new products or innovative technologies or expanding into new geographies through merger or acquisition m&a when you are doing when you are launching new services new product or new technologies or you are expanding or you are uh, acquiring any another entity this privacy by design concepts must be fulfilled in that case now the question comes how because there are seven principle we have seen we have seen what actually the privacy by design is now the question comes here how we are going to implement what kinds of controls we need to implement within the it system to protect this privacy by design or you can say to comply with this privacy by design clause so that the tech, there are various technology what we can implement within the organization those technology are called as the privacy enhancing technology by using privacy enhancing technology we can able to implement privacy by design clause within the it system the first and the important thing is that authentication there should be a provision of user authentication within the computer system or it system to authenticate the user that means authentication is a key to securing computer systems and is usually very first step in using a remote service or facility and performing the access control you have collected various personal information of the user those personal information should be controlled through the access control 
or you can say you need to implement authentication mechanism before the before any persons within your organization is trying to access those personal information the first step is to implement authentication mechanism within the tools or software or IT system the another important control that is called as the secure private communication that means control on the, the data which is in motion that means if you are sending any data from sender to receiver from sender to receiver that data should be controlled through the communication channel through which the data is going from the sender to receiver so how we can do so in this case what we need to do we need to use the modern cryptographic techniques to secure those data the all types of communication from users should be protected in case the personal information or the sensitive information are being transferred or you can say shared from one uh, one person to another persons that means the data that is in motion should be controlled enough this should be controlled now how how we can use what kinds of encryption technology we need to use for the data in motion the first technology what what is widely deployed technology that is called as the TLS 1.2 that is transport layer security what we need to implement within the system to protect the personal information of user which is being transferred through a network another thing is that end to end to end encryption also we need to in, encrypt we need to use because numbers of data will are being transferred through the wires over internet protocol VOIP through the mails also we are sends, uh, we are sending the data we are also using the multiple social networking media for the communication between the end user Su such services which also use the encryption technology to protect end to end the data which is being shared from one user to another user the end to end encryption should be there this is the first tech for this is the control what we can implement within the organization now the we have seen the data in motion what about those data which are in rest or the data which are captured in our databases so those data should also be controlled or you can say the data in rest should be encrypted by using various suitable technology in uh, encryption technology we can use because your storage or you can say your databases have lots of information which you are collected so this also should be implemented or you can say encryption control should be implemented on the data which are in the rest another control what we can implement that is called as like the local encrypted storage LES what is local uh, local encrypted storage local storing the data is encrypted form is a straightforward option one can use full disk encryption like uh, windows has given us the full disk encryption control we can do the full disk in, we can use the full disk encryption also and if we are not uh, using this full disk encryption then we, we can use this file system level encryption because the moment you are collecting the personal information of the user also you are collecting the uh, credit card debit card related information so those inform those information should be encrypted by using this file system level encryption either we can use this FD if you are not able to do the F FD so we can use file system level encryption that is called as the FSE So there are various examples of F FSE that can be implemented like uh, for Mac uh, we do have an option that is called as file vault by using Mac computers Mac PCs we can encrypt and decrypt the data by using this file vault software BitLocker most common features we do have in the Windows so by using this BitLocker we can able to encrypt the machines 
next is your uh, LUKS that is called as Linux Unified Key Setups. This is this this features are uh, widely used for encrypting the Linux devices. So these are the certain features what we can use for the endpoint security. You can say data which are there in your endpoint machines. So these are the controls what we can implement. Uh, as a part of this privacy by designs measures which organization can take apart from this if we are uh, if some of the tools applications we are already using across the organization in that case also we need to conduct this privacy by design practices we need to uh, ask certain questions from the huge uh, from um, the tools uh, manufacturers or you can say if it is developed in-house the first thing is related to encryption control encryption control whether the encryption encryption of the data in motion and the data data in motion and data in rest data in rest is encrypted or not another part we can uh, we can have uh, pseudonymization and anonymization techniques whether the data pseudonymization and anonymization is being uh, used or not the third the third controls what we are trying to uh, see that whether the data which are traveling through one network to another network or you can say data in motion is encrypted or not there are certain things what we can consider while doing this privacy by design assessment for the older tools what we can we have within our organization so that's all from the privacy by design perspective uh, we'll meet uh, you in our next video thank you